share from God's Word. Amen. Holy Spirit, uh, bless us as we share the truth of your Word today. God, make it live in us. Oh God, so that it's not uh, just a word we hear, but a word that uh, burns in our spirit and in our hearts, and it moves us and motivates us forward to the purpose of the kingdom of God. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. In a book called Watchman Prayer, there is a um, devotional or an article about how imperative it is for us to be alert. And uh, it reminds us of the failure that took place in the United States at Pearl Harbor and that Pearl Harbor was a tragic failure of the watchmen, of the people who were responsible. The United States officials and commanders failed to pay attention in the critical weeks and days and hours prior to 7.55 on December the 7th, 1941. And uh, if those people who were in strategic leadership had, re had realized the necessity to be aware and to listen to the, the dangers that they were being warned of, the results and of the attack on Pearl Harbor would have been uh, very, very different. In meeting with both the Secretary of the Navy and the President, Admiral Richardson of the uh, Pacific Fleet had alerted them to the dangers that the United States, States Fleet was in as it sat in Pearl Harbor. He was concerned that the Japanese would realize that the United States had a vulnerability there and would take advantage of the situation. So he warned the Secretary of the Navy and the President, but they did not listen. His warnings were ignored, and very shortly thereafter, he was dismissed. The commanders at Pearl Harbor, Admiral Kimmel and Lieutenant General Short, were alerted to the impending danger of war on October 16th, on November 24th and November 27th. But not believing that the attack was possible, the only precautions they took were against Japanese sabotage. So in fact, instead of moving the fleet to a point where the attack would have come from, they remained, the entire fleet remained moored in the harbor. There were some personnel who were allowed to go on leave. Would there have been a difference if they had been called to remain at their post and their location had been moved from where it was. Only four hours before the attack, a United States destroyer in the Pacific sighted a Japanese submarine. But not being alert to the immediate danger, the destroyer did, re no one reported the, on the destroyer reported that attack to anyone. And then there was an army private who was at a radar uh, situation uh, and he was practicing his radar and he told his superior officer that there was a large squadron of planes that were approaching. And the person who was training him did not pay attention to what he said, thinking that they were, it was possibly a group of B-17s that were supposed to arrive uh, from the United States. So the enemy gained, it, gained an extreme benefit from their lack of vigilance. More than 2,300 American servicemen were killed. Over 1,100 were wounded. Two battleships were destroyed. Six others were heavily damaged. Several lesser vessels were put out of action and more than 150 United States planes were wrecked. 
In this whole process, the Japanese lost less than 100. They sacrificed only 29 planes and five midget submarines. Their task force escaped their fleet without even being attacked by the United States. Now, the lack of being alert, the lack of being aware both of the enemy's presence and capabilities was, and their intentions, I might add, were what the primary reasons why this attack resulted in such great devastation. And the military leaders and the civilian leaders in Washington, as well as the commanders there at Pearl Harbor, had failed to heed the warnings of an impending attack. They had failed to listen to the danger. It was their neglect to listen and to beware that allowed the enemy to be successful. In our text today in Colossians 4.2, the New King James Version gives us this. Continue earnestly in prayer, being vigilant in it with thanksgiving. The New American Standard Bible says, Devote yourselves to prayer, keeping alert in it with an attitude of thanksgiving. Taking my title from this verse, I want to speak to you today about being alert in prayer. Last week we spoke to you about being devoted to prayer and the imperative importance for us to pray as a practice, as a normal part of our Christian lives. But in this passage today, we find a different emphasis, and it is an emphasis about being alert. In the first two chapters of the book of Colossians, as we preach through it, Paul addresses the beauty and the glory of Jesus Christ, his magnificence, and the salvation that he has wrought for us. In chapter 3, he addresses the kind of life that we are to live so that we may glorify this glory, glorious Christ whom we serve. When we come to chapter 4, Paul addresses the power source that enables us to live the kind of life that will glorify God, and that is prayer. The word that is used in this verse for alert is, is a word which means be watchful, be awake, be vigilant, or be alert. And it is found in Luke 21, 36, where it says, stay awake, stay awake, praying at all times for the strength to survive. And again, later, he says, awake, right? He tells us that we're supposed to be awake, we're supposed to be watching and vigilant as a soldier is who is on guard. He's watchful. He, he doesn't go to sleep on his post. He keeps his eyes uh, searching the distance. He's looking and listening so that he can detect an enemy who may be coming and who may wish to take advantage of them. And so he tells us that he wants us to be alert. In the book of 1 Peter, he says, But the end of all things is at hand. Be ye therefore sober. Watch unto prayer. Watch unto prayer. Being alert unto prayer. Being vigilant unto prayer. Being vigilant to make sure you pray. Mark 14, 34 says, He says unto them, My soul is exceedingly sorrowful unto death. Tarry you here and watch. Tarry you here and watch. Be aware of what's going on. Watch and listen. In Mark, Matthew 26, 38, then he said to them, my soul is exceedingly sorrowful even unto death. Tarry here and watch with me. Watch with me. Let me read from the book of Mark chapter 13 beginning in verse 28, if you'd like to read along with me. Now learn the parable from the fig tree. When its branch has already become tender and puts forth his leaves, you know that the summer is near. 
Even so, you too, when you see these things happening, recognize that he is near right at the door. Truly I say to you, this generation will not pass away until all these things take place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. Now listen to what he says. But of that day or hour no one knows, not even the angels in heaven, nor the Son, but the Father alone. Take heed, keep on the alert, be watchful, be vigilant, for you do not know when the appointed time will come. He goes on in verse 34. It is like a man away on a journey, who upon leaving his house and putting his slaves in charge, assigning to each one his task, also commanded the doorkeeper to stay on the alert to be watchful, to be paying attention. Therefore, verse 35, be on the alert, Jesus said. Be paying attention, be watching, for you do not know when the master of the house is coming, whether in the evening at midnight or when the rooster crows or in the morning, in case we should come suddenly and find you asleep. What I say to you, I say to all, be on the alert. Now, Jesus is saying this in regard to prophetic events and telling his disciples that they need to be ready and alert at every moment. What Paul is writing to us is in regard to prayer. And Paul is saying that we should be as vigilant, as watchful, and alert to pray as these are being admonished to be watchful and aware and ready and thinking about the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. Ephesians 6.18 tells us, With all prayer and petition, pray at all times in the Spirit. And with this in view, be on the alert with all perseverance and petition for all the saints. Be on the alert. Be paying attention to pray. Be paying attention to make sure you're calling on God. Now, this statement, watch and pray, comes from Nehemiah where it says we prayed to our God and because of them we set up a guard against them day and night. We set up a guard against them day and night. So they, they were watching and they were guarding and they were guarding the, 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 the people. So they were watching and aware. So this, this, we prayed to our God and we set a guard and we watched. In essence, what God is saying to us is what's here, is we need to be on the alert, we need to be ready. Not only are we to practice those things that are normal for our Christian life, but we should always be on the alert, watchful to pray and to seek to God. So we should be alert to pray because it's a part of our being spiritually watchful. It's a part of our being spiritually aware. Make sure that you are praying. Men ought always to pray. Now, how are we to be alert in prayer? There are a number of things I'd like to share with you this morning that speak to uh, why we should be alert to prayer and, or in prayer and what prayer will help us to grasp as well. I believe that we should be alert in prayer to the realities that are around us. We should be alert to the realities that are around us, alert to our time. The scriptures teach us that we are in a day of evil. We are living in the end times. But realize this, that in the last days, Paul said, difficult times will come. In the last days, difficult times will come. Because of the rising, mounting tide of evil, we need to be on the alert in prayer. We need to be watchful in prayer. Letting prayer keep us keenly tuned in, in, in awareness to what's going on in our world. Jesus gives us a principle that I think is important for us to understand in Matthew 24, 12. He says, because lawlessness is increased, most people's love will grow cold. Because lawlessness will increase, most people's love will grow cold, pointing ahead to the end time scenario very close to our day. So 
in essence, he, he's saying to us that at a time of increasing wickedness, in a time of increasing evil, it is imperative for us to be alert and seeking God so that our love will not grow cold, so that our, our love will not diminish. Is your love for God on the front burner with the burner on high? Or is your love for God in the refrigerator or on the back burner on low? Where is your love today? Prayer is intended to help us stay alert in days of evil. When things around us are going wrong in our society and our culture, God does not want us to allow our culture to begin to mold us and shape us so that we lose the zeal for the Lord that God has for us, that we lose the sense of intensity of love and commitment to God that we ought to have. And he wants us to pray so that we will keep our love burning, burning bright. God has given us various weapons of warfare with which to fight, but it's interesting that Paul said that Having done all of these things, we need to pray and we need to seek God. We've got the weaponry, but we need to supernaturally activate it by our relationship with God in prayer. Yes. And in this time of evil and wickedness, when things around us are, are disseminating attitudes and emotions and, and, and theories and feelings that are contrary to the will of God, let us be alert in prayer so that our love will be fervent for the Lord. I believe, secondly, God wants us to be alert in prayer to the times around us, so we will pray. So we will pray. I believe that he wants us to be alert to pray so that we will be alert to the weakness of our flesh so that we will be alert as to the weakness of our flesh. It is a problem with people that when they begin to experience some degree of success, some uh, paths that they travel are prosperous and things go better for them, that they're can be a loss of the sense of danger. There can be a loss of the sense of need. There can be a loss of the sense of, uh, I need to be intense as I seek the Lord or call upon God. Because they began to feel comfortable and they began to feel better and the problems are diminishing and they think they can make it on their own. It is our pride and it is our arrogance that causes us to come to the place that we think we can make it without prayer. And we begin to think that our flesh is not as strong as it is or the potential for our failure is not as strong as it is. And we may be very much caught by surprise. This, this amounts, if you will, to denial of our need to a denial of the fact that I have a potential problem that I have to deal with in my life by praying. So I'm alert to the weakness of my flesh. I'm watchful against temptation that may come to me. The thought is that the life of prayer is the, one of the surest means of guarding against the slackness of moral failure in our lives. And whenever we allow ourselves to fail in this area, we open up the door for our pride and arrogance to live in self-dependence rather than in faith and trust in God. And when we're taken by temptation and it surprises us perhaps, we may fail. Listen to, to Jesus. Keep watching and praying that you may not enter into temptation. Did you get that? Not just pray, but keep watching. Be alert, be vigilant in prayer. Be vigilant in it because you may enter into temptation. 
And it may prevent you from actually entering into temptation if you will watch in prayer. Watching equals seeing something. It's potential. Uh, it gives us the potential of seeing something. So if I'm on spiritual guard and I'm watching and I'm alert to what's going on in prayer where God is speaking to me and directing my thoughts and opening the word of God to my comprehension. I may be forewarned by God. I may receive a word from the Lord in my spirit or heart through his word that will quick equip me and quicken me to preserve me from temptation when it would come against me. Someone once said to be forearmed is to be forewarned. Or forewarned is to be forearmed, pardon me. To be forewarned is to be forearmed. So if I know the enemy is going to attack, I can prepare, I can be ready so that temptation will not take me unexpectedly. So that it will not creep up on my blind side and take advantage of me. <clears throat> The enemy is very much like a story I was reading where there was a family that had a son who come had come back from a visit in South America and he had brought two boa constrictors with him to take home as pets. One day they woke up and the son was very concerned and he said, hey, the boa constrictors are not in their, their cage or in their, their container. These are full-grown bull constrictors and there was some great family concern and you can understand over the fact that those boa constrictors were were loose and so they began to check the house they looked everywhere in the house they could look they looked high they looked low they looked in all the cabinets they looked under uh, under things they looked around things and could not find them they went outside and looked outside all around the house in the yard in the trees around the house and they were uh, unfound and they were greatly concerned and late at night uh, after having searched all day they were uh, at the point where they were, were exhausted and, and went to bed mom and dad tucked the, the, the children into bed and uh, uh, then went in to sink exhausted into their own bed and they both slid into their bed and as they did so there was a scream and they both instantly jumped out of bed, throwing back the covers, and there at the foot of their bed, underneath the covers, were those two boa constrictors coiled up together uh, in their bed. <laughs> the point I'm making to you is that you never know where the enemy's going to attack. You don't know where he's going to come from, what he's going to do. And Jesus said, watch and pray so that you'll not enter into temptation so that you will be alert so that you will see so that you will know so that you will comprehend if you please what's going on alert in prayer I believe we should be alert in prayer we should be alert to be thankful in prayer we should be alert to be thankful. In Colossians, listen to what he says. Devote yourselves to prayer, keeping alert in it with an attitude of thanksgiving. Keeping alert in it with an attitude of thanksgiving. Being alert in prayer to be thankful is a reminder to remember. It's a reminder to remember what God has done. It's a reminder to remember God's salvation, a reminder to remember our, our need of, uh, uh, of His grace and how sufficient His grace is. A, a reminder for us that we will not fail if we put our confidence and trust in Him. It's a reminder that we can have a positive faith in an evil-filled world. It's a reminder that uh, we have a God who is working in everything that happens to us in our life to bring benefit to us and glory to Almighty God. There is, it's a reminder that there is a power working in our lives now to which we have access. God in all of his magnificent, eternal, self-sufficient, and, and grace-giving glory is there available to us. Yes. And he says, be thankful. 
Be alert in your prayer to be thankful. There are so many people who can only remember from moment to moment the good things that happen in their life. And every new experience that's bad or difficult or hard makes them want to give up or quit or throw up their hands or feel like there's no hope. But when we are people who know how to be thankful, we're constantly in contact with the reality of the living God, yes. that he is living and working. He has wrought and he is working and he will yet work in our lives. Hallelujah! Yes. Yeah. So that we may, uh, we may put our confidence and trust in him in, in a wicked world. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yes. I believe Paul is saying that we need to be alert in prayer <coughs> so that we will be alert to the needs of our brothers. So that we will be alert to the needs of our brothers. Listen to verse 3 that follows verse 2. I'll preach on this next week, but to mention it today, praying at the same time for us as well, that God will open up to us a door for the word of God. So Paul said, pray for me. Pray for me, one of your ministers. Listen to what he says in verse 12. He says, Epaphras, who is one of you, a bondservant of Christ, greets you always laboring fervently for you in prayers always laboring fervently for you in prayers. So Paul and Epaphras were alert in their prayers to pray for others. They were alert in their prayers to be mindful of the needs that other people had. Remember what Paul said, for this reason also since the day we heard of it, we have not ceased to pray for you and to ask that you may be filled with the knowledge of his will in all spiritual wisdom and understanding. People he'd never met, people who were not people that he had personally won to Christ, that had been won by one of his co-laborers. And yet, here Paul is alert in prayer to remember the needs that these people have, to say, to pray for them, to call out for them before God. There are Many of our brothers and sisters who are dying every day around the world for the gospel of Jesus Christ. There are many of our brothers and sisters who are losing their possessions, their children, their job, perhaps even their families, because they have chosen to commit themselves to serving Jesus Christ. Doesn't it behoove us, their brothers and sisters in the faith, to remember them in our prayers? Do we think that because we have it so much better than they do that we ought to say, well, it's too bad for them. I wish it was not so. And then go on our way without lifting a word or a voice to cry out and say, God, help my brothers and sisters. I believe that the Lord would lay his finger on our heart and say, if you were in their place, you would want them to cry out to God for you and to pray, God, help my brothers and my sisters. And so Paul says, be alert in your prayer. Be alert to remember that there are some brothers and sisters out there who need you to intercede for them, to supplicate God in their behalf so that they may be helped. Hallelujah. I believe Paul is saying, and he's using this word, watch, to remind us that we ought to be alert as to how we pray. As to how we pray. Paul is not talking about casual prayer. Just throw a prayer out there because you've got to pray. Oh, I've got to pray over the meal. Just, oh, just pray something to get it over with. No, Paul's not talking about casual prayer. He's talking about alert prayer. He's talking about energetic prayer. He's talking about prayer that requires you to put yourself into it. He's talking about prayer that gets into your spirit and causes you to cry out and to call out and talk to God. Paul's talking about prayer that prevents us from being drowsy. You ever been praying and just nod it off and quit? Yeah. Be watchful. 
Be alert. I believe that there is a sense in which we may be physically drowsy when it comes to prayer. But there's also a sense in which we may be spiritually drowsy when it comes to prayer. Almost in a stupor. But Paul is saying we ought to be alert in our prayer. We ought to be aware. Listen to 1 Thessalonians 5, 4, and 6. But you, brothers, do not live in the dark that that day should take you unawares like a thief. No, you are all children of light and children of the day. We do not belong to the night or to the darkness. So we should not go on sleeping as everyone else does. But stay wide awake and sober. Now he's talking about our spiritually being wide awake and sober. Having our eyes open and our ears on alert. But when we talk about prayer, that's how we ought to be. Wide awake and alert. Be on your guard, Acts 20, 31. Remembering how night and day for years I never slackened in counseling each one of you with tears. Be on your guard. Be alert, he said. Don't be drowsy. Matthew 24, 42. So stay awake because you do not know the day when your master is coming. William Barclay uses uh, or defines this word in the Greek and he says literally the Greek word means to be wakeful. The phrase could well mean that Paul is telling them not to go to sleep when they pray. Sometimes because of the tiredness of our body or mind we struggle against sleep as we pray. At other times we pray as if we were asleep and our prayers simply sound and feel tired and sleepy. May God help us so that our prayers may be prayers that are alert. We're watching. We're aware. We're involved. We're in what we're doing. Our mind and our spirit are there. We're watching what's going on. I believe that when Paul says be watchful in prayer, he's telling us that we need to be watchful against negligence. Watchful against negligence. Against neglecting prayer. Against neglecting that which is an imperative for us as Christians. We need to be watchful against the kind of prayer that is useless. And there are, there are some kinds of prayer, some prayers that are prayed that are useless. They mean nothing. They go nowhere. They achieve nothing. They are what we would call perfunctionary. Or per, perfunction, perfunct, perfunctory, pardon me. <laughs> They're unthinking. They're automatic. They're just mechanical prayers. Your mind is not in it. Your spirit is not in it. Your, uh, your heart is not in it, if you will, please. And when we are praying those kinds of prayers, we lose our sense of urgency. We lose our sense of need. And Paul says that we need to be uh, awake. We need to be aware in prayer. We need to be praying the urgent kind of prayers, the prayers that are watchful and aware. Remember what Paul said in regard to the Christian life and generally said, let us not be weary in well-doing, for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. Now, we can grow weary in doing the right thing because it's difficult to do the right thing at times and hard for people to walk in the right way sometimes because of what they face and the people they, they deal with and the experiences of their life. But Paul said, let's not grow weary, even though the job's big and there's a lot to do, let's not grow weary because we'll still reap, we'll still reap. Let's, let's stay at work, let's keep our heart in it, our mind in it, our spirit in it, let's be energetic. Well, prayer may also become a weariness to us unless we're alert, 
unless we're watchful and prayer can become something that uh, we are perfunctory about. Again, we're praying unthinking, automatic, mechanical prayers. We pray them because this is what we pray at bedtime. We pray it because when I lay my head down on my pillow, I always say this to the Lord. Now, I don't want to say that God, God doesn't care or understand what you say in those moments. What I'm saying is that whenever we're praying, whatever time we're praying, whenever we're praying, our prayer has to be more than just simply automatic. It must be something that's real, that's coming from our thoughts, coming from our spirit, coming from where we are with God and wanting to seek Him. Because we can become people who just pray prayers that don't matter and don't make a bit of difference unless we're watchful when we pray. I believe that Paul would say to us we need to be watchful as to the direction of our prayer and this is very closely associated with what I said earlier when I spoke to the fact that Paul said we should pray for him and we should like Epaphras pray for our brothers and sisters and like Paul pray for all of those people even those he'd not met his, his prayers were directed to God for others and his prayers were reaching out to make a difference in the lives of others because they needed God. They needed God's help. They needed God's grace. God wants us to pray about our needs. God wants us to call upon him about the things that are important in our lives. God teaches us that. He teaches us to pray. But if our prayer is solely something that we exercise before God so that God will give us something, I think we've missed the point. If we're solely praying about me and my needs or my family and my children and, and we think that that's all there is to prayer, we're missing the point. Because God, God's heart embraces all men, regardless of color or creed. God that cares about them, wants to see them all saved, wants to see them all become a part of the family of God, wants to see their lives change. God can make a difference. It's our job to catch the fish. God will clean them up. Amen? But God wants us to be alert so that our prayers are prayers that are reaching out to touch the lives of other people. Do you believe that your prayers make a difference? If you don't believe your prayers make a difference, then your prayerlessness makes no difference. And it would not be a sin. If your prayers make no difference, then let's stop praying and let's just enjoy the music. Why should we pray if praying is just something we go through because that's what religious people do? No, no, no. You see, prayer is a contact with God. Prayer is relationship and communion with God and praise of God and worship of God and thankfulness to God. It is you interacting with your Lord and your God and your God as you behold Him transforming you from glory to glory. It is your God directing your thoughts and your attitudes in your mind as you're praying in His presence so that you become who God wants you to be so that you are protected and preserved, so that God directs you in a pathway of ministry and service God wants you to work in in your life. Yes. Prayer is that pathway whereby we lay our hand upon the current of heaven and it makes us vibrate with the glory of Almighty God. Yes. So God is calling upon us to pray, yes. to be alert to pray. Because he makes a difference. Yes. He makes a difference yes. as we pray. Bow your heads with me today as we conclude in prayer. Lord, we've gathered here today in your name, Lord, to seek your face and to draw near to you. And oh God, we don't want to be those who practice a church house religion or a Sunday religion or faith. 
But we want to be people who live for God in truth, whose lives are marked by prayer, who are marked by intercession, who are marked by watchful awareness, a sense of urgency in prayer that keeps us in dependence on God. Lord, today, awake us if we're asleep. Wake us up so that we will no longer slumber and miss what you're saying and what you're doing and open the door for the tempter to take advantage of us. Mm. Oh God, awaken us. Oh God, awaken us so that we will see that what we do when we pray makes a difference and lives are blessed and helped because we pray. Mm. Oh God, we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen, amen and amen. I want to encourage you today to pray. Amen. amen. Encourage you. Thank you, Tom. You can go ahead. I want to encourage.